Sarah Fisher and hey thanks for coming by this channel all right today's topic is about how the Lord gave me a new name yes God actually gave me a new name and he gave me this name well at least he revealed this name to me just before I truly was saved and truly came to Christ this incident actually happened quite a while back and I think it must have been about seven years ago roughly and he actually gave me this name in a dream and then confirmed it with a sign in the natural I'm not gonna give you my entire testimony right now because that actually literally takes me hours to tell my full testimony it is so intense and it's so lengthy but i will tell you the part where the lord gives me my my new name so firstly let me say this i was born in a muslim family and my birth name was mahira amir khan and through my life in my adult years, I was all about building up my name to my career. I was very ambitious. And so much of my efforts and energy were invested in building my name. I was in the film and TV industry. So, you know, on IMDb, you get credits under your name. And with every production and project you're involved in, your name gets put out there. And I had really worked hard to build it up. And what happened was, I had gone through a series of events in my life by that stage and it was at the juncture where I felt like I was at the height of my career something in me was changing where I found that nothing in the world was satisfying me and I realized that I really needed to pursue the Lord at that time I didn't call him the Lord I just called him God and I found that when I started pursuing God seriously committedly then everything seemed to break down around me and that is such an understatement if you knew the details i actually found myself having a dream one night in the dream i was given a necklace and this was a beautiful gold necklace <sighs> such a treasure this piece of jewelry was being placed around my neck and it was a gold pendant and it had the letter S on it. And I remember, even now, I still remember that when I had that dream, my goodness, first of all, of course, I didn't know it's a dream. I thought this is happening while I was in it. And I thought in the midst of it that all my life I have waited for this moment when I'm given this piece of jewelry because it was a hallmark in time I waited all my life for it and I'm finally getting it I was so happy and delighted and over the moon and I'm looking at the pendant and I thought thank you so much God that you finally gave me my gift I needed this so badly and then I woke up while I'm starting to wake up, I start to think to myself that one second, my name is Mihira. Well, it was at the time. Why am I getting a pendant with the name with the letter S on it? It doesn't make any sense. And then, this is so strange. This action, this is a true story that's happened, okay? So I wake up from the dream and then I check my phone because I want to see the time, right? That's what you usually do when you wake up, you pull out your phone. And I looked at the phone and someone had sent me a text message and the message said, hi, Sarah. And then the rest of the message was gibberish. It was like an ad or something and it was, yeah, it was gibberish. And I tried calling the number and I couldn't get through. It wasn't an active number. But it was the strangest thing because I just come from that dream where I saw, oh my goodness, all my life I wanted this necklace and this is, this is the moment where everything changes and then the letter S and I realize, hey, wait, what's my name again? And then I wake up with that message that says, hi, Sarah. I started to remember that when I was a kid, when I was a little girl, tiny little girl my mom used to love this song and 
I can't even remember the title of that song, but I remember the lyrics because she would sing along with it. And she would sing, K Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. K Sarah, Sarah. I'm not a singer. <laughs> I'm totally not a singer. But anyway, that's the song. And when my mom used to sing that song, there was once when I told her, Mommy, why did you call me Mahira? That's not my name. My name's supposed to be Sarah. And I've asked my mom now, do you remember when I told you that? She doesn't remember, but I remember because I knew that was not my name. And this is a memory from my childhood that I had forgotten, so to speak, until this dream. And this whole incident took place. And following that, in the few weeks after that dream, guess what? I truly got saved. I had a divine encounter with the Lord where I was crying out to the Lord and I had a um, physical experience of His presence that changed me. I didn't see anything. I didn't... Oh, it's a long story. But in any case, I got saved just after that dream. And that dream was a prophetic word. I did not understand it at the time, although I understood without doubt that this is very significant. This is what I've been waiting for all my life. But now in hindsight, I can see that the Lord was giving a prophetic word. Hey, a new chapter is beginning, a new identity. I'm giving you a new name, your true name. <laughs> and after I got saved a few weeks later, Wow, the series of events that transpired and let me tell you, everything in my life changed. Everything. I used to live in Los Angeles at that time, but after I came to the Lord, my eyes changed. I viewed everything differently. I, I just had to get away and I was in, I moved to, to Asia for a short while. That's where my family's from. I had given up my job. I had given up my life in Los Angeles. I had given up everything. And I was just besotted by the Lord Jesus. And lo and behold, it wasn't long before the Lord had set me up to get married to my husband. That again was the Lord's doing. He wasn't looking for it and I wasn't looking for it either. It was all supernatural. I will share that one day in my testimony because like I said, it's a long story. The dream was a prophetic word that was followed with salvation and then followed with a series of complete changes in my life including getting married and coming into full-time ministry which i had no idea that i would be in ministry that wasn't even in the any part of my mind but the lord is so full of surprises isn't he he's amazing and my friends at that time they would always say this. I miss the old Mahira. You've changed so much. We can't do anything the same way that we used to. All you do is talk about Jesus. And I would get so mad and I'd say, Mahira is dead. You're not getting her back. Stop asking for the old Mahira. Things are never going to be the same way again. And even to this day, to this day, which is years later, I still have sometimes when I talk to people from the old days, even family, they might say, you have changed so much. I miss the old you. Well, the old me is dead. <laughs> You're not getting her back and I don't want her back. So when I got married and I'm suddenly in full-time ministry, I had to change my name anyway because my husband's surname is Fisher and I became Mrs. Fisher. So I had to go through the process anyway of changing my legal documents. And because I had said to my friends so many times, Mahira is dead, she's dead, you're not getting her back. In addition, I also had that dream where I was given a new name. I just felt like this is it. This is the time to really completely let go of the past and take on a brand new identity. You know, my walk in Christ has not been moderate. It, it's all or nothing. And that's the way you've got to think. It's all or nothing. You have to give Jesus everything. You have to be willing to allow him to slice it all away so that he can then rebuild you. But there is a time where Everything seems to be 
taken away from you, torn away, and those around you will not understand. And so I took on the whole new name and a whole identity, everything brand new to represent a brand new life in Christ, a holy life. And it became a statement as though I'm shouting from the rooftops, the old me is gone and now I belong to Jesus. Changing my name for me became like a statement to the world, to my friends, to my family, to everyone around me that I no longer live, but Christ lives through me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live through faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave His life for me. I pray that the Lord reveals your name to you and that you are able to willingly and freely let go of all things from your past and walk into the new path, this amazing path that He has for you. Even if that means being alone for a while and being misunderstood for a while, I pray that the Lord strengthens you and equips you and that you will have the courage to let go of all things from the past, that you'll be willing to be misunderstood and even persecuted in order to freely release the reins, giving it all up to Him and entering into a new and holy life with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a whole new life, a whole new beginning. I just don't understand how anyone can say that they are Christian, but you are living the same way you did before. You're living just like your friends who haven't taken Jesus as Lord. When you take Jesus as Lord, you are giving up the old ways. You are allowing Him to take over and take you through this journey where the flesh is crucified and everything changes. Why is a believer called a believer? Why do we use the term born again? What is this new birth that occurs? The old has to die so that something entirely beautiful and wonderful, something new can be reborn. When you first come to the Lord Jesus, you will see the struggle where people from your past and your family, they will resist the changes they're seeing. They're not going to like it because it's going to trigger the unclean spirits in them that don't want change. How can they be around you, an ambassador of Christ, an ambassador of holiness, when they still have sin in their lives that still has to be dealt with and they're not ready to deal with it. And you know, in the beginning, in the beginning, the danger is you start to see all the evil and wickedness around you and the danger is you start to become condemning and critical. And that happens, I think, for a lot of new believers. It happened to me. But at that stage, you keep your eyes on yourself and on your personal journey. Let the Lord wash you and clean you first before you start trying to prove to everyone else who Jesus is and trying to minister to everyone. Focus on first cleaning yourself, getting the log out of your own eye and allowing Him to do a work of sanctification in your own life. And at the right time, then He will lead you to be more open and vocal about it. But if you start preaching and ministering too quickly, you haven't yet learned to be led by the Spirit. You haven't yet been cleaned and washed by the Lord. So you will find that you can actually do more damage than good. And I say this because I actually did that. Now, I'm not saying don't talk about Jesus. Yes, by all means, you cannot help but shout it from the rooftops. But make your focus about growing in the knowledge of the Lord and catch yourself when you become condemning of others. There's a time to minister and He will make that time apparent. So in order to avoid unnecessary dissension and upset with those around you, allow yourself to quietly grow in the knowledge of Him first until you're stronger. Because you're going to need that strength. Believe me, you're going to deal with persecution. You're going to be dealing with attacks. The deeper that you go in pursuit of the Lord and serving Him, 
there is persecution so so wait to fight only those battles that he gives you a lot of the battles that new believers go through are actually unnecessary battles that the Lord did not lead you to so uh, yeah so okay so if you are young let's say you are still living with your parents if you are at that young age 18 and under then you are under the dominion and authority of your parents so you have to take into consideration that you have to honor your parents you're under their roof still and they are supporting you they're paying for your school and your food so you have to take all this into consideration quietly study quietly gain knowledge and strength and at the right time you will be an example to your family and even without you directly preaching they'll start to see changes in you and then you can according to the leading of, of the spirit then you can share with your family so in any case when we come to the lord jesus we do have an entirely new life be willing to let go of the old and do not compromise even if everyone resists around you saying hey i want the old you no 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 the old has died the old has passed away and now you have come to new life holy life with the lord jesus christ and there's no compromise give up the friends give up the activities give up all that compromises your walk in christ even if you have to be alone for a while that solitude is necessary allow yourself to go through it and the lord will reward you it's time for a new beginning, a new name, a new identity in Christ. Remember that the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing us from the soul and spirit. And what comes to mind is the priests in the Old Testament, when they received the sacrifice, they would slice it. They would cut away the skin, the intestines, until you get to the meat. Now, Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. And similarly, we have to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, which means things have to be sliced away and cut. And when you expose yourself to the Word of God, you start to see that always will be cut away. Let it go. And your heart may break about certain people you have to let go, but let the lord have his way at the right time he will touch those very people and he will touch your family members and they too will come to the lord what you can do is to intercede for them in the meanwhile but let the lord first sanctify you thanks for watching this video love you guys shalom and see you next time closer to heaven when i'm in your arms feeling you're present when you're near or far Who would have guessed we'd end up where we are Even I had doubts Don't tell me where we're gonna go Just take me Right now, every time you close, I'm shaking